if he wants to sit there and bang, I can hurt him. All right, I'm going to put it out there. One of the most requested episodes for the Punch Podcast. And finally, we've got Jai Opatai. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm going to be honest, mate. I've been really looking forward to this. So this is going to be good. Yeah, let's go, mate. <laughs> yeah, bring it on. Look, mate, you're obviously getting ready. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia awaits again. You're going to go back there and uh, reclaim that IBF belt, which, uh, let's be honest, shouldn't have been stripped, but we'll get into that too. But uh, how are you feeling? Uh, look, we're only a month away pretty much now. Feeling good, man. Been um, training hard. Just same shit, different day, you know. Train, eat, sleep on repeat for months now, so... I'm, I'm excited. I'm, I want to get this fight done. And then, um, you know, God willing, we sort of roll out of this fight injury-free and roll straight into the next one. So I'm looking to have a busy year this year. Do you feel like, although they stripped you, you never technically lost the belt and you'd probably be fighting him anyway. So in my head, it's still your belt because <laughs> uh, no one else has claimed it. So I guess you've got to go and win that again. And that's obviously your... Uh, the the inspiration, which is what you've got to do, but does it feel like you got a bit of a point to prove because they pissed you off the first time? You know, not it, it. Honestly, it doesn't get to me that much. You know what I mean? I'm just I'm so focused on just winning fights. That's all I sort of picture doing. All the all the politics and 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 the drama that follows outside the ring. You know, I try not to get caught up in it. Um, you know, the way they sort of. We, we had to vacate the belt. You know, I was forced to do that. Four bigger opportunities. It all worked in my favour. So, you know, all, all we do is focus on training hard and then when it comes time to perform, we've got to perform well. There's no guarantees when you did vacate that this opportunity would be there. So it is uh, it is nice to know that you uh, you chased what you needed to do for your family, but yet you've still got that opportunity to claim what's rightfully yours anyway. I think that's, that's not too bad. Yeah, no, it is good how it all worked out. It, it's like I said, it's all worked in my favour, you mm. know. So it's all positive. Outside of the belt, do you care for fighting Marius Bradis again? Is he someone that you thought you'd have to fight again? And there was obviously the start; he wanted the rematch immediately and all that stuff. But that was now almost two years ago. Um, it is what it is. You know what I mean? Like I've never really sort of picked and choose who I was going to fight. They just give me a name, and I just you know prepare for it so that's what I'm just going to do again you know it doesn't matter who's in the ring on the opposite side all I got to do is just do what I do best and that's and that's you know train hard and, and fight well so I just got to execute our game plan being able to adapt to anything he sort of brings to the, to the table and it's just another victory you know another stepping stone to to where we're going yeah well since the last fight you've had two great victories uh he hasn't fought at all and he's getting, I guess, later on in his career as well. He's almost at that point, which is, well, I'd say he is at that point where it's absolutely nothing to lose. Exactly. But it's dangerous. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's for someone like that. And and he's still got a lot of skill. You know, he's got good skill. He's got good power. Yeah, and um, he's always had a good engine. So he, he's going to be fit, ready. You know, it's not his first rodeo. He, he's, he's fought for so many world titles. You know, he's, he's already a three-time world champion. Um, he's a very decorated cruiserweight. You know, he's, he's probably one of the best cruiserweights of this decade. But I said this before the last fight, and, and I told everyone, you know, he, he is a great fighter. But I, t I, I told everyone that I was the next generation of greatness coming through. You know, he, he's had his time up the top. He, he He's run the cruiserweight division for a long time. But his time's up now. You know what I mean? The new generation's coming through and that's me, you know, and I, and I believe I can run the whole cruiserweight division and, and, and prove that I am the best cruiserweight in the world. Will you go into this fight, obviously trying to make that stamp because last one obviously went the distance. We know everything that you went through for that one as well. I guess this one, you get to really put him away once and for good, which is, I guess, a, a great thing. And then, and then your last couple of fights, I think with the last Breda's fight, you looked tough and you looked great. And then the last two fights, you've looked amazing as far as like you, you've gone, you've gone levels up. He hasn't fought in two years. I mean, you must be feeling, I guess there's a level of confidence there of, of your ability that you can come off, I guess. Yeah, for sure. Um, 
but it, it, the confidence comes from the the work we put in. You know what I mean? I, I'm only getting better is because we're training harder and we're, we're learning in our camps. You know, like we've had this international experience now, and it's all it's all just helping us progress to the next level. And we're constantly leveling up. So, you know, I, I feel like a whole different version of myself compared to, you know, who, who I was when I first fought him. So, you know, I feel like I'm. Oh, I, I honestly feel like I was a young boy back then, and and now I'm I'm molded into a man and and, and into my sort of prime now. So, you know, I, I'm excited to to jump in the ring and, and prove how much I've grown in and outside the ring. You know, I just feel like I've got an answer for everything now. You know, he, he's like I feel so much stronger. You know, I feel like I can hurt him even. You know, I can hurt him more. I can, I can. I could actually knock him out, you know what I mean? And like the first fight we had, I was just, it was more a variety of punches, throwing threes and fours and, and working, working. But, you know, I feel like if he if he wants to sit there and bang, I can hurt him. So, you know, I, I'm curious to see how he comes out, how, how aggressive he's going to be. So should be a good fight. If you've seen your Instagram lately, you'll see that you're training for 15 rounds. So, um, uh... You must be, uh, you're putting those Ks in. Like there's no stones left unturned on this one. And obviously if it's got to go to deep waters, like you're definitely preparing for, then you're ready, right? Definitely. hundred percent, man. We, we, we push our body beyond, you know, like that pain threshold, that fucking deep water shit. Like we love it. We lived it. So he, he can't take us anywhere. We haven't already been multiple times. So. You know, we, we that's that's where we get our confidence from is is the is the pressure we put on our my body, my mind, like preparing for twelve rounds of war. You know what I mean? So I'm ready. I know you obviously do prepare for that, and you've got an answer for everything, whatever he's going to bring. Do you ever envision your fights on? Okay, I think this is how it's going to go. Change if you need be, but do you do you envision anything for this one? Like when you shut your eyes, do you see the the victory? Every single day, every day, every night, every time I have a nap, you know, I, every time I close my eyes, it's, when I'm getting ready for a fight, that is all I do every second of the day. You know, I don't, it's hard for me to think of anything else but how I'm trying to win this fight. Now, one thing I'm obsessed with is all of these fights over in Saudi Arabia because it's just his excellency just having the most fun he possibly can, putting the most deadliest fighters, sitting back, front row, and just loving it. It's a different world over there, isn't it? Yeah. Honestly, it, it, it's awesome. It's awesome to be a part of. You know, it's as a fighter and a boxer that, you know, I've been boxing my whole life. I've, I've, I used to dream of being a part of fight nights like this. You know what I mean? This, my, my first Rio season experience, one of the biggest fight cards in history. You know what I mean? The, the names on it, the people I'm rubbing shoulders with. And, you know, uh, and, you know, you'd know we're just kids from the Central Coast at the end of the day, you know, like seeing to the level where I'm at now, it used to seem so far away. Like it used to be, I don't want to say impossible, but just a, it just looked so far in the distance, you know what I mean? And, and such a grind and, and and being from a certain area like us, where it's not normal for, for people from where we're from to make it to to such international levels, you know what I mean? But we earned our spot there. You know, we deserve to be there. So it, it, it's a great feeling to be a part of these big historic um, um, fight nights, you know. Like like I was saying, that that first we had season, one of the biggest fight nights in history. And then I rolled into this fight night, which is one of the biggest heavyweight fights in history. You know what I mean? Like, it just, it, it's all, all I've done is just train hard, stay in my lane and focus on my own journey. And the rest is falling into place. You know what I mean? I, I always say it when I go places, we're not there to disrespect, we're there to earn respect. And that's what we do everywhere we go. Yeah. I saw he's got this pimped out gym, His Excellency, and your gloves are actually up there signed on his wall amongst a bunch of other stars as well. It's just the magnitude of, of what they do over there, which I find just really amazing. It's interesting. Yeah. How do they look after you? Like, I know you've probably been to some fight nights that would be lucky to send you a cab charge where I'm assuming that you looked after pretty sweet over there. Yeah, man. They they tick every box over there. It's very organized. Everyone's got their own drivers. Everyone, yeah. you know, the gyms are 
perfect. Everything, everything is what we need, you know, and and it's great because as as a boxer, you know, we we sacrifice our lives and 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 we we put in so much work, you know. People people only see us in the rings and they certainly see the ups, you know, on social media and stuff, but they don't see the downs, you know, the 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 years and years of dedication that it's taken to get here. So it's it's like finally, you know, we're, we're getting someone that that respects us for what we do. Um, you know, he he is just a a huge boxing fan with a lot of money that can just whatever he wants to happen, man, he just goes, You fight him, you know, like I'll pay you this much and then we'll just stop done. But <laughs> you know what I mean? So Take me IBF yeah, girl. Yeah. I'm there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what it's like now, you know what I mean? And it's good because it takes away all the politics. Yeah. You know, all the, when 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 you're trying to fight for these belts, there's so much stuff that happens behind it. But when you're fighting on a Riyadh season, he goes, you'll fight him for this much. Yeah, all right, sweet, done. And it's that simple, you know what I mean? There's no, oh, vacay and this and that and then this. I know it's this, but it's good. I, I'm, I'm proud to be a part of these big fight nights. So. And then you get to go back, do it, with all of the uh, the trimmings that you just speak of, but then get your belt back. So that's even sweeter. Thank exactly. you. Yeah. Thank you, His Excellency. Yeah. I'm, yeah. Uh, I'm looking forward to getting over there. I'm looking forward to see what happens uh, next. Obviously, you've got a few other weights and you've got a few other opportunities, a few other people. I know Eddie, he's spoken about even uh, Better Be, even Bivol, uh, potentially uh, looking at you as well. Are those guys, yes, there's Breedus, but are those guys uh, names that have come up in serious conversation? For sure. Um, you know, I've had a few conversations about that. But one thing I will confirm is there's no way in the world I'll be able to make 175 pounds. <laughs> so there's no way I'll be able to go down the weight. But if they want to meet me at a catch weight, you know, in the high 80s or, you know, if they want to come up the cruiser, I would be happy to be a part of a fight like that. You know what I mean? And I mean that respectfully. You know what I mean? Both, both them fighters uh, have great styles. And um, and, I, and I believe with my style, I... I I grew up watching fights, you know what I mean? Those, those I, I grew up, my, my old man would put fights on and go, come here, watch this, you know, watch what they do. What, look at how he boxes him and stuff like that. You know, when I was a kid, that was my childhood. So I feel like for me to fight any of those, like whether it was Bivol or, or the um, bit of a, well, yeah, he, him, like I feel like that's a fight that people would watch over and over again and, 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 and learn from and stuff. So, I'd love to be a part of a fight like that. Is heavyweight an option for you? Definitely. I, I see heavyweight further down the track. You know, um, my training and stuff we, we've been we've been building. You know, I'm getting bigger and, and stronger, and um, you know, I feel like I'm going to naturally progress into a heavyweight. You know, like I, I feel like I'll be able to do that pretty pretty comfortably. You know, I I still make cruise weight very easy. You know, like I still make weight. And I and I'm and I'm cruising in on the scales, you know. Like we're, we're we're very professional, but um, you know, I feel like once we have that heavyweight change, we're gonna have a few months where we're gonna put on some good size, and then um, you know, I, I, I'm excited for that chapter. But but now that the there's a bridge weight as well, so you never know what could happen. Three division world champion. I like the sound of that. that Me too. Right. It makes my podcast a lot better when I've had a three division world champ on. Thank you very much. Yeah. I haven't. Very possible. Very possible. <laughs> it does look good. And uh, look, the other thing about that too is you're fighting for the IBF belt. Now, I have heard you say that the WBO is something that you want to pursue. Is that a, as a belt that, is it the fight with Bill and Smith or is it the WBO that you'd like to wrap around your waist? That WBO, it's um, it's got a little bit of sentimental value, you know, like, um, so I, I really want to strap that belt around my waist before I hang my gloves up. Yep. Why? Uh, just through my pop and stuff, just just through some family stuff, you know. I'd, I I want to win it and then tell the story. Yeah. So. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Well, at least you've got that. There's obviously people want to win belts that winning belts, but to have something that that's like a real, real, real driver because there's there's a yep. little more to it than we look forward to uh 
see in that moment what an accomplishment when you set out that goal and have that belt at the moment they've obviously been playing games and uh at the 154 division i've seen obviously tim have to lose his belt with fundora and now it's looking like it's going to be terence crawford as an interim up up and uh, there's a there's a bit going on i guess the politics is something that you just can't avoid huh at that level yeah man when you get to this level Man, that 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 outside noise in the in the business side of boxing, it, it gets a bit sticky, eh? But it is what it is, you know. It, it's all it's all part of the sport, you know. No, no matter what, we can't sort of escape it. So we just got to learn to sort of adapt and evolve and 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 work with it. So you know, we we and at the end of the day, man, I got to focus on winning the fights because without winning the fights, none of it even matters anyway. So I just got to make sure. I do my job and my team does their job. Yeah, well, look, there's always fishing. I mean, if that doesn't work out, yeah. I mean, who wins the uh, the Flatty Classic, you or Breedus? There's a question for you. That's that's <laughs> a silly question, mate. <laughs> you got all the spots, not telling. Uh, don't all worry up. about me. <laughs> How often a week are you doing that? Because I always like the fighters that, like you said, you're zoned in and you're so focused, but every, everyone's got their thing away from it. And obviously – Fishing's a big thing for you. What's the attraction to that? Is it the silence out of the madness or is it just pulling one in? What is it? Uh, honestly, I, I, I like to say that, it, you know, it's an escape, blah, blah, blah. Like, it's peaceful. But, man, when I'm fishing, if I'm hooking a fish, I am puffed. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> it, it, uh, I don't know what it is. It's just something that I've loved to do for a long time. And, and it, it's, it's like anything, you know what I mean? Like any sort of hobby you get. The, the more you get into it, the better you get at it, the more you can learn about it. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's caught my interest and, and I just, I love it, eh? Like, I honestly love it. But I don't get to fish as much as I would love to, especially when I'm in camp. But um, I'll be making up for it after this fight. Don't worry about that. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're not a guy that, and uh, and you have seen recently, there's been some stuff floating around about you where you don't do the flashy things and all that sort of stuff, which is cool. But do you ever think about, like, treating yourself with like a wild fishing trip that only money can buy. You know what I mean? Like, is that sort of stuff? Yeah. Look at him. <laughs> it's glowing. Yeah. Don't worry about <laughs> Where's that. Where's the It's in the works. It's in the works. <laughs> okay. No, no sorry. Uh, I'm trying, yeah, like fishing trips, you know, with my mates and that. That's 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 my goal. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, so you, you buy a freaking a watch for 30 grand or you can, you know, 30 grand, me and the boys going on a fishing trip to like, you know, Tahiti or something, like in the Pacific Islands, catching fish, memory of a lifetime. Like, I picked a fishing trip, uh, you know, over any day. So, you're about to get 50 DMs about people trying to become your mate to get on that. <laughs> let me tell you. Yeah, so he does. Send them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, obviously, let's talk about the main event Tyson Fury, Alexander Usyk. It's been a very, very, very long time since there's been an undisputed heavyweight champion, none in the four belt era, I don't even believe. But, what do you see there? Because that is, A, a special card to be on, like you have said already in this show, but it's just a it's just a good moment to see that actually happening. And obviously, his, his excellency is the guy to do that. But how do you see that fight? Because it's pretty awesome. It's a great fight. You know, I'm, I'm actually really excited to watch that fight. Um, you know, I feel like I feel like both of the boys have, you know, used to get into, I feel like they can both win the fight. Like, they both have the tools to win the fight. They're both smart, great fighters. I feel like it's going to be a different type of heavyweight fight, you know? You know when the ones that you're on the edge of your chair, like someone's going to get knocked out at any second? I don't think it's... I, I feel like this is going to be one of the most punches thrown in, you know what I mean, in a heavyweight fight for a long time because I just feel like that's who's going to steal the rounds, you know what I mean? Like, it's just... It's such a chess match. Like I, I'm, I'm so. Just even the way Fury's going to come out and use his range, if he's going to bounce a lot, like I, I've noticed he's been bouncing a lot more on his toes. You yeah. know what I mean? And and that's what he has to do. You know, he has to keep bouncing because if you just stand flat-footed with Usyk, man, he's going to be able to find his range and pick you off. So, and Fury's got so much ring IQ. You know, I could sit here and just talk the pros and cons all, all day, like. I just feel like it's an it's an awesome fight. You know, it's great for boxing because it, it's going to be a chess match. You know what I mean? It's not like there's a lot of heavyweight fights that just are big bombers and they're just like you just 
it takes the 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 light off the actual boxing skill because there's just big bastards in the ring trying to knock each other's head off. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I feel like this is going to be more of a more it, it, people are going to see the science of the sport. You know, so I'm uh, I'm excited for it. Hey, eh? I'm, I'm pumped. It is an interesting one. I think Fury, maybe after Nagano, although he got the victory, he wasn't too red hot. I think uh, maybe there's a bit of a redemption here to really show that he is the elite sure. level that he, that he says he yeah. is. But, I mean, then you got the size difference and he's lost weight and you've been in there with Fury. What's he like actually to be in the ropes with and like feel his weight and his pressure when you're like pushing him back? Um, Yeah, man, he, he's, he's taller than I thought. He yeah. is so long. You know what I mean? Like his arms, they're just like I'm six two, he's six nine. Like the the way if he uses his range the way he should, he he can win the fight. You know what I mean? But in saying that, you know I'm not that tall. I don't know how he feels or. Oh, it's just such a it's such a good fight. You know, like I'm I'm really curious to to see who wins, and I want to see how they both approach. To beating each other and their game plans and who who sort of executes their game plan better you know what i mean but they're both they're both taking this fight very serious you know when i went over to spa with fury it was a great experience and and you know he he seemed like he was switched on you know it, it didn't seem like a a fury that walked into the nagani fight it, it seems like a he wants to win this you know what i mean and then there's you know, you think that just he's a fucking animal. You know what I mean? I, I even got told like I, I think last night I done an interview and the interviewer said that you think missed the birth of his child because he was training. Hey, that's that's serious business. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like these guys, you don't you don't get days like that back. You know what I mean? Like you got to think if I'm missing the birth of my child and I'm at this fucking gym. You best believe, like, wow, we are training through pain. Like, we are pushing our bodies to the limit. Like, that's not a that's not a little deal. You know, it might sound like a little deal to people, but for for men to miss out on the child their child's birth and stay in the gym, they're not wasting time. They're not they're not doing easy sessions. You know, you don't miss fucking ch- the birth of your child for an easy session. You know, they they're trying to earn it and and. You know, so things like that, just hearing things like that, the sacrifices they're making, it makes me even more pumped for the fight because I know these boys want to win. Yeah. It, it is It is going to be one of the ages, and I think it's going to be great. And obviously being able to sit there and watch it while you've got your new world title, you're around your waist again, and it's, it's uh, going to be something to uh, be there and enjoy. And I can't wait to uh, watch yourself. I mean, the Riyadh time zone in Australia, not too friendly, but that's all right. You'll probably be about, what, 8 a.m., I'd say, roughly, if I'm probably guessing, in Australia anyway, maybe. Yeah. So, uh, we, go, mate, yeah. we know how you go. Uh, you've done it. Uh, what are we up to now? 24, 25. What have I got here? 24 and zero. So, uh, look, we look forward to seeing you back in the ring, Jai Opatia. Thanks for... Finally jumping on the podcast and having a chat and uh, look, it's going to be great to see you in that ring again, doing what you do best and making easy work of Marius Bredis. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time, mate.